Thank you for taking the time to continue to be a learner and a youth worker. It's a great combo and I'm honored to be part of the youth ministry tribe with you. My name is Doug Fields and I'm super grateful for your commitment to teenagers and their families. And, um, you know, as you may have already figured out, relationships are the heart of every solid youth ministry. And without healthy relationships, a, a ministry won't come anywhere near to its full potential. Your youth ministry, it can have a um, solid strategy, it can have plentiful resources, amazing programs, even a multitude of caring adult leaders. But without relationships, your youth ministry uh, will reveal a serious deficit. And the same is true of you as a leader. You can be super gifted and talented and charismatic, but if you don't have the right relational skills, your impact will be limited. You don't really influence kids from a distance. You see, real influence doesn't come from a stage. It, it happens up close. And if you're going to be a successful leader with teenagers, you've got to be continually looking for ways to strengthen your relational muscles. We all know that there are dozens of ways for you to make your relationship with teenagers stronger, but for this specific training, I want to put the spotlight on one specific skill that I'd like to see all youth workers develop and deploy, and that's encouragement. For a small percentage of youth workers, uh, caring words and affirming words and empowering words, those all come naturally. And maybe you are a words person and you value words and you use them well. And if that's true of you, way to go. You can skip this training and move on to another one, or you can keep listening to see if maybe you can learn something more. But you're definitely in the minority. See, the majority of us need to develop this critical skill and we need to learn to use the right words which can enhance a young person's life and open the door to a more personal and trusting relationship. See, relationship with a teenager is going to be deeper than mere encouragement, but a, a rightly timed and placed word of affirmation can actually change the course of a life because words matter. Proverbs 18 verse 20 says, Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. And that is so great because who doesn't love a good meal? It's like your, your words can actually provide nourishment for a young soul. In addition to nourishment, your targeted words may actually redirect the course of a young life. See, I, I've actually seen words shape a person's life and you probably have too. You, you've, you've heard that mom say, you know, this is my daughter, Jill. She's shy as, you know, Jill cowers behind her mom's legs because she's heard that descriptive term shy a million times. And innocent Jill has become the product of that verbal modifier. Or the dad who says, you know, this is my son, Carlos. He's my wild child. As Carlos, you know, lets out a demonic laugh and lights a palm tree on fire. Okay. Words matter because they, they can actually shape people. I often wonder about this when I think of what, um, what Jesus did with Simon. You remember Simon in John chapter 1 where Jesus changes his name to Peter? He calls him Petros. You, you will no longer be Simon. You will be Peter Petros, which means rock. He was basically the first Rocky, and uh, you, I got to imagine the disciples that were around were going, really, Rocky? I mean, you know Peter, maybe call him Pebbles or Sandy, but not, not Rocky. And yet Jesus saw something in him and chose those words correctly, that term correctly, that name correctly, because you look in the early church, what happened? Peter, Petros, became a rock in the early church. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, Doug, are you suggesting that my words as a leader, as a youth worker, can actually change a person's life? Well, I can't guarantee it, but I do believe words matter, and I believe you matter. And I also believe a well-placed, thoughtful word of encouragement can actually be the seed that God can water and grow into something meaningful. I mean, what about saying something as simple as this? Something like, uh, hey, Kyle, I, I noticed you greeting that new kid and you made sure that he felt comfortable. Way to go. I mean, that's, that's just a strong display of leadership and I'm super proud of you. 
simple, right? I mean, could it be, think about this, could it be that those words of leadership could take a hold in Kyle's life and he might begin to look at his interactions with his peers in a different way because of your words of encouragement? I mean, I think there's a strong possibility that if Kyle heard those words on a regular basis, he might think more deeply about leadership. See, so your words can literally help shape his leadership. Or how about saying something like this? Um, Juanita, thank you for being so open and vulnerable in small group tonight. Your, your willingness to share from your own pain made me want to be more open in my own pain. So thank you for being willing to risk. Again, super simple words, right? I mean, maybe Juanita hears those words and shows up the following week more eager to share because she was encouraged from you. I mean, targeted, thoughtful, encouraging words, they make a difference. I mean, one more example. What about something like this? Andy, uh, I love watching you serve this week at summer camp. A couple times I looked at you and I thought, you know, I bet Andy would be really good in a, in a ministry position. No pressure. I just want you to know that I believe in you. I think Jesus could use you in a big way and you should pray about maybe heading your life towards that of doing ministry. I actually spoke those words recently to a teenager and now I'm praying that they'll become profound to Andy. I'm praying that, that he'll recognize that he's super gifted and that he needs to hear those words from somebody that, that cares about him. And here's what's amazing about all this talk about encouraging words. Those words didn't cost me anything because words are free. You're not paying for them, so why are we so stingy? See, words become costly when they're not spoken. Now, obviously, we need to be very careful with the words that we use, and uh, we need to take responsibility and see it as a privilege to speak words into a teenager's life, and we need to be serious about that. We can't be irresponsible with words, and because of this, I, I think we need to be spiritually discerning. And that's why leaders like us, we, we must walk closely with Jesus. We must um, listen to his spirit and prepare our hearts to be used in ways that might be transforming for a teenager. You know, in Matthew 15, verse 18, Jesus said, The words that come from our mouths originate in our hearts. So as a leader, in order to speak life-transforming words, I've got to make sure that my heart is right. And all good youth ministry originates in the depth of a leader's heart. So let me give you a caution or a warning to consider. You can become good at encouraging teenagers, but um, as you've probably experienced before, uh, <laughs> most teenagers aren't very good at encouraging you. I mean, many of them don't have the emotional vocabulary to say what they really want to say and what you may want to hear and need to hear. Uh, you want to be encouraged too. I get it. We all do. You want to know that you're making a difference. And you might not ever hear that from a teenager. You know, I could preach my heart out and give the best message I've ever given on a Sunday morning. And a teenager comes up to me afterwards thinking he's going to say good job. And he says, uh, you know, can I borrow a dollar for the Coke machine? <laughs> and sometimes that's discouraging. See, you know, a lot of kids are not good at encouraging, and partly because of their age and their immaturity. But it might also be that they've never had good models of encouragement. And I think teenagers are desperate for significant people like you in their lives to lean in close and breathe life into them through their words. And if encouragement is food for their souls, I think most teenagers are starving because I've never met a teenager ever who said, you've got to stop encouraging me, man. I've, I've had it up to here with all this encouragement. That doesn't happen, right? And you can't expect them to affirm and encourage you. And so just know that that's not going to happen. So you be the adult and that's fine. And hopefully there are others on your leadership team who are providing you the encouragement you need, but just don't expect it from teenagers. And if you don't expect it, you won't be discouraged. So please take some time to think about this and pray for this skill in your life as a leader. I'd love for you to become proficient at speaking this type of specific encouragement into kids. And in doing so, not only do you breathe life into them, but you also model to them a, a relational skill that can really help them in their own relationships. 
relationships matter. And words are just one way that you can open up the door to a more significant relationship with the kids that God has entrusted to your care. So blessings on you as you share life-giving words to students this week. Thank you.